My name is Connie Weglars. I'm a physical therapist at Barrow Neurologic Institute, and I'm a member of the Knowledge Translation Task Force for the Vestibular Rehabilitation Peripheral Vestibular Hypofunction for the updated clinical practice guideline. I will be covering 10 action statements. You can find the article by authors Hall et al by scanning the QR code or by going to neuropt.org and looking under practice resources, clinical practice guidelines. Before I get started with the action statements, it is important that you understand how the clinical practice guideline uses evidence to make recommendations. The level of evidence ranges from level one where evidence is obtained from high quality randomized control trials to level five, expert opinion. From the level of evidence, the clinical practice guideline provides a grade for each of the recommendations. The grades range from A, strong evidence, to D, expert opinion. Action statement one, addresses the effectiveness of vestibular rehabilitation in adults with an acute and subacute unilateral vestibular hypofunction. An acute hypofunction is considered less than two weeks and a subacute hypofunction is considered two weeks to three months. Action statement one indicates that clinicians should offer vestibular physical therapy to individuals with an acute or subacute unilateral peripheral vestibular hypofunction. These recommendations come with a high quality of evidence and a strong recommendation. Action statement two is similar to the first statement, but addresses the issues of chronicity. Clinicians should offer vestibular physical therapy to individuals with a chronic unilateral peripheral vestibular hypofunction. A chronic hypofunction is considered more than three months in duration. This recommendation comes with a high quality of evidence and a strong recommendation. While the first two action statements address a unilateral peripheral vestibular hypofunction, action statement three addresses adults with a bilateral peripheral vestibular hypofunction. Clinicians should offer vestibular physical therapy to individuals with a bilateral vestibular hypofunction. This recommendation comes with high quality of evidence and a strong recommendation. Action statement four addresses something that we should not be doing in the clinic. Clinicians should not offer saccadic or smooth pursuit exercises for gaze stability in individuals with a peripheral, unilateral, or bilateral vestibular hypofunction. Again, this recommendation comes with a high quality of evidence and a strong recommendation. Action statement five is the first time the evidence quality is only at a level two, while the recommendation strength is moderate. Clinicians may offer targeted exercise techniques to accomplish specific goals that are appropriate to address identified impairments, activity limitations, and participation restrictions. Action statement six is broken down into two parts and focuses on the topic of exercise dosage for individuals with the peripheral vestibular hypofunction. Statement 6a focuses on dosage of balance exercise. Clinicians may prescribe static and dynamic balance exercise for a minimum of 20 minutes a day for at least four to six weeks in individuals with the chronic peripheral unilateral vestibular hypofunction with no recommendations for acute and subacute hypofunction. Exercise duration is recommended for a bilateral peripheral vestibular hypofunction for six to nine weeks. The level of evidence quality for this action statement ranges from level two to level four 
and the recommendation strength is weak to expert opinion. This is lower than any of the other action statements. Action statement 6B focuses on dosage of gaze stabilization exercise and provides parameters based on the time since injury for a unilateral or bilateral peripheral vestibular hypofunction. Clinicians may prescribe weekly clinic visits plus a home exercise program for gaze stabilization at a minimum of three times a day for a total of 12 minutes for an individual with an acute or a subacute peripheral vestibular hypofunction. For a chronic unilateral peripheral vestibular hypofunction, clinicians may prescribe gaze stabilization exercises three to five times a day for a total of 20 minutes daily for four to six weeks. For an individual with a bilateral peripheral vestibular hypofunction, clinicians may prescribe gaze stabilization exercises three to five times a day for a total of 20 to 40 minutes for five to seven weeks. Evidence quality for this action statement ranges from level two to three, and the strength of the recommendation is weak. Action statement seven identified that clinicians should offer supervised vestibular physical therapy to individuals with a unilateral or a bilateral peripheral vestibular hypofunction, meaning that the patient should not just be given exercises to do their, on their own without having oversight. This has high evidence quality and a strong recommendation. So when might vestibular rehabilitation be stopped? Action statement eight states that clinicians may use achievement of primary goals, resolution of symptoms, normalized balance and vestibular function testing, or a plateau of progress as reasons to stop therapy. This action statement has level two evidence with a moderate strength recommendation. Besides stopping therapy, what might modify outcomes? Action statement nine states that clinicians may evaluate factors that could modify rehabilitation outcomes, including anxiety, depression, migraine, peripheral neuropathy, abnormal vision, abnormal cognitive, and long-term use of vestibular suppressants. These factors may make it more challenging for patients to get better. Age and gender do not impact outcomes. Action Statement 10 states that clinicians should offer vestibular physical therapy to individuals with a peripheral vestibular hypofunction with the intention of improving upon their quality of life. This has a high quality of evidence and a strong recommendation. So in summary, there is strong evidence for the effectiveness of vestibular rehabilitation in patients across time, acute, subacute, and chronic in a unilateral and bilateral peripheral vestibular hypofunction with supervision and with the intention to improve upon quality of life. Moderate evidence exists for exercise that addresses specific goals related to patient impairments, activity limitations, participation restrictions, for stopping vestibular rehab, and for factors that modify outcomes. There is weak to expert opinion for balance and gaze stabilization exercise dosage for a unilateral or bilateral peripheral vestibular hypofunction. Thank you for your time and commitment to incorporate the evidence into your clinical practice when working with patients with a peripheral vestibular hypofunction. Please check out the knowledge translation resources located on the ANPT website. Thank you.